sterile interiors devoid of people. What's so special here, you might ask? It's not immediately apparent that you're looking at models made of paper. Many of the subjects are mundane. For example, this bus shelter where German pop band Tokyo Hotel caught the bus to school. Fans flock to it. Trained sculptor Thomas Dehmann has been fascinated with paper since his college days. Paper also has the advantage of being so familiar to everyone. Everyone writes on paper and sometimes scrunches up paper. I prefer to keep it simple and use natural techniques and not get too much into the handicraft side. In his Berlin studio, Munich-born Demand works with scissors, adhesives, paper and consistent principles. This archive footage shows him building life-size recreations of scenes from newspaper photos using paper and cardboard. He would photograph the model and then throw it away. A cartoonist will normally have a table in the background with a window, but the proportions aren't important. The main thing is that people perceive it. In my case, the point is to see that it's not just any table. This attention to detail is ultimately what makes the picture so convincing. The headquarters of Communist East Germany's Stasi secret police after the fall of the Berlin Wall. The bathtub in which German politician Uwe Barsha was found dead in 1987. The kitchen of Saddam Hussein's hideaway, all made of paper. Dehmann selects locations of historical or political significance, or events that have become part of our collective memory. His eerily realistic looking photos provide considerable food for thought. When people go to museums, they have no context for the paintings. The people on the portraits are no longer alive. People don't know who they were, but they stop and look simply because the paintings are so good. He was treated to a solo show at the New York Museum of Modern Art in 2005. From galleries in London to the Biennale in Venice, Thomas Demand is a star. Collectors pay six-figure prices for his works. In 2007, visitors to Venice were presented with a model of his photos. It comprised over 30 tons of paper. It also marked the first time he broke his golden rule of destroying the paper model after capturing it on camera. People know me and think they know my work. I just wanted to give visitors the opportunity to see the ideas behind the pictures. The Oval Office in the White House was another source of inspiration for Demand. In 2008, he and his team built a paper replica in just three and a half weeks. What interested me about the Oval Office was its huge exposure. We know it almost as well as the Eiffel Tower. Every little difference will be noticed, because people know the furniture and the people so well. A closer look reveals that the carpet is made of confetti. For the perfect ripple in the curtains, Demann took inspiration from a centuries-old cardboard folding technique from Italy, as he did with this angel. For reference, he used hundreds of photos covering several different presidencies. I was looking for a compromise between the myth of the room and the room in reality, and then decided relatively quickly to create a hybrid. I had curtains from Bush, the floor from Reagan, the carpet from the West Wing. I wanted to show the Oval Office as we imagine or remember it. In 2009, the Neue National Gallery in Berlin hosted a solo show of the celebrated star's works the only one to date in his native Germany. That exhibition has now made him a finalist for the 2011 Deutsche Börse Photography Prize. The winner will be announced on April 26th.